All right, how do you do a simulation in PSPICE from scratch if you don't know anything? I'll show you exactly how to do that. So go to your start menu and you should have ORCAD Capture or I'm using ORCAD Capture CIS Lite here. You may also have a leg or whatever you have, but you can go to Capture CIS Lite, then the software will open. You will come to the start page and then you can do a new project and you can also do file new project to do the same thing. Now there are a couple of things here for your new project name it something like AC rectifier. We're going to build an AC rectifier to figure out how to use PSPICE. Create a new project using PSPICE analog or mixed AD. That's what you want to choose. Now I'm going to browse and create a new folder and then I will call it example AC rectifier path does not exist um, okay I'll call it example AC rectifier great once you've made your folder you just double click and go inside you select the folder then click OK choose to create a blank project then click OK so let's say you don't know where anything is there are parts that come pre-installed with the software and come preloaded in libraries but if you want to guarantee that your simulation will work start going to place and choose from pSpice component this guarantees that you'll find parts that can be simulated let's first of all place a ground so the first thing you want to do is place a ground so we'll place that it looks good now you can right click and choose end mode or escape to stop placing parts but I usually don't bother doing that Go to place piece by component. Next, we need a capacitor. So rotate with R on your keyboard. Just hit R on your keyboard and you can rotate. Next, we'll place the resistor. So we want two resistors in the schematic. And I'm going to rotate that. Place one here, then another one here. This is the output resistor R2. What else do we want? Go to PSPICE component diode. This is a generic diode and you can just place it wherever you want. This can replace a shot key diode or regular diode or power diode, whatever you want to do. Um, let's place the diode here for now. Then place the other diode. Let's rotate it, pointing in the right direction. Great. Next, let's go place a sinusoidal voltage signal. So you want to go to source, voltage sources, then sign. Okay, place the V sign. Then we need to place a specific kind of device called a thyristor. And let's go to place piece by component and this time we go to search we can search for the type of part we want and you would type in something like thyristor and this will pull up a lot of options okay now i'm going to go ahead and select the 2n1595 silicon thyristor it's pretty generic one if you want to find out more information about it you can go on google or something and then uh, search for it you can click on the name once and then double click or just click on the name once and hit enter then it will catch it attached to your cursor rotate with R place it right here then that's good okay now we need to change some values here so double click on the 1k change that to 200k for kilo ohms this is the load resistor here so change this to 100 ohms now for this sinusoidal voltage, we want our DC offset to be zero. The amplitude, I want this to be 50 volts amplitude, peak to peak. Frequency, let's set it to 60 hertz since we're in the United States, at least me recording this video here. Change this to 10 nano 
Farads, but small n, capital F, no space. And now let's wire this circuit. I don't see an option to connect a wire. So what you can do is go to View, Toolbar, then Draw. And then this gives you the drawing options. I'm going to close this window. This is the place wire command, which is also done by hitting W on your keyboard. So let's wire up the schematic. Okay. To wire the schematic, you just use your left mouse button to make single clicks. Don't hold and drag down the mouse button to make your connections. Just click and release to place the connections. And by default, whenever you click on something, you use the left mouse button, not the right mouse button. The right mouse button gives you options. The left mouse button allows you to execute something. Okay, so these are our diodes. Okay. Right click and wire. Now let's say I want to move this capacitor. Um, you want to move a part. You would hold control, the control key and then hit X. So that's control X. Then hit control V to paste a part and then it gets attached to your cursor so you can paste it wherever you want. Click and place this right here. You can also drag parts. So like this ground here, I can click, hold and drag this ground around but you have to hold down the left mouse button when you select it okay let's continue placing wires here so hit w on the keyboard make your connections All right, that looks good. We have our circuit and let's name this circuit. So we can go place text or hit T on the keyboard for short. Now I have here rectifier circuit pre-populated pre already, or you can type it in, just type in rectifier circuit example for whatever, you know, something like that. Set the color to whatever you want. I'm gonna go with red or dark red. The font, I have it set to Times New Roman. By default, it's usually set to Arial or Courier New, I believe. So it's a Times New Roman Bold 20, click OK, then click OK. Then you place that right at the top there. Right click and then choose End Mode or hit Escape on your keyboard. Okay, now that the title is placed and we have the circuit, what do we need to do? Uh, to see the output across this resistor, we need to set up a simulation profile. So make sure you save your project and set up a simulation profile by going to PSPICE, New Simulation Profile. Now we can name it Transient or call it Time Simulation. Hit Create. Then the Simulation Settings window shows up with the name of the simulation profile. Make sure you're in Analysis. Analysis type is Time Domain Transient and General Settings. Now let's set our runtime to something that makes sense for our frequency. Maybe 100 mil milliseconds that small m stands for milliseconds and then this is seconds that's a t-stop value maximum step size let's set to 1 milli or in fact let's set it to 0 0.1 milliseconds click apply and there's something really important you need to have in every piece by simulation profile go to configuration files choose library this file here is loaded by default usually but on rare occasions, it may not be there. So you want to make sure you choose Browse. And you can find this file in your installation folder for the software. Cadence, SPB underscore 17.2, Tools, PSPICE, Library. Then you want to look for nom.lib. That's the file you want. Or you can scroll down and then it's right here. This is a really important one. You click open and then you add this as a global. So that's how you do it. Okay, click apply, then okay. Now you're ready to simulate your circuit. 
So go ahead and run pSpice or go to pSpice run. What's happening right now is the pSpice software is calculating the Kirchhoff's current law and the a Kirchhoff's voltage law, voltage law, doing calculations on every node in the circuit to get all the voltage, current, and power values inside every node. So it's running calculations, and you'll see what it's doing right around here. Simulation profile, simulation running. And don't mind my icon just jumping up there. Bias point calculated. Now it's running the transient analysis, and there we go. The total job time, 6.41 seconds. OK, so why don't we have any results? Well, uh, the reason is because we don't have any probes on the circuit or voltage probes on the circuit to actually see what's going on in our circuit and the devices. So we need some probes. You can go to these voltage differential markers here. And if you don't have this menu, you can always go to PSPICE markers, then a voltage differential. Place one voltage marker here and then the other here. This will show us the voltage right across this input voltage. So let's take a look. See how it's green in your schematic and it's green in the results as well. So that looks really good. Let's minimize this window here. Next, I want to find the voltage from uh, across resistor 2. So click on voltage differential marker, place the first marker there and the second marker across that negative side. Right click in end mode. Now let's look at the results. So this looks great. Now your simulation may not have as thick lines. And why is that? You can go and click on one of these traces, right click after you've clicked on it, choose trace property. Your trace may look something like this by default. And that's hard to see. You know, that's um, it's not very good to look at. It makes things hard to see. So I'm going to show you how to make it so your traces always show up with uh, thicker lines. But before I do that, let's separate these two signals. So first of all, I'm going to put this input voltage source in green on its own plot. So click here, hit Control X on your keyboard to cut it. Now let's add a new plot. Right click, choose Add Plot. Then you can hit Control V to paste the input voltage that comes from V sine or V sinusoid. And that is how you generate your plots for your piece by simulation. Now, again, you can modify your trace widths like I showed you earlier. You can right click on the signal, choose trace property, change the width to whatever you want. And yeah. Uh, one last thing, go to tools, options, and you can change your default trace width. Now, mine is set to three by default, and um, but you can set it to two or one is the default if you have a new installation for the software. So if I set it to one, it doesn't change new traces I add until I close this out, close out the software. So that is how you simulate a circuit in PSPICE uh, or ORCAD Capture. If you like these videos, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also check the description below for useful links on how you can learn more about ORCAD Capture, PSPICE, and Allegro PCB Editor. Thank you.